Hi everyone, welcome back to Java One for All. Before we continue with JDBC, there are two things that I would like to add to our project. Uh, one is logging, and the second one is Lombok. So let's start with Lombok, because if you go back to your producer, your entity class, every time you create a Java class, basically you have to create technically the builder, the equals, hash code, to string, getters, setters, and so on. There is a library and now that we have Maven, we can easily make use of it called Lombok. So if you search for Lombok, the first link, Project Lombok, and you come to Features and Stable, it shows you some annotations. So basically, these annotations will generate code for you. Uh, there are a lot of companies that they do not like this in production, but there are some that just accept. Uh, I never actually had any problem, but for you that are learning, it's quite nice to have this in your code because it will make it way cleaner. So we have, for example, equals and hash code. And by using this annotation, equals and hash code will be generated for you. And if you want to generate equals hash code to string, getter, and setter, and the constructor, basically just have to use at data. Let's see how that works. First, we need to get the dependency, Lombok. Um, just click here, let's get the latest, just copy, go back to your project, go back to Maven, the pom, and here inside the dependencies, let's add Lombok, Ctrl Shift O to import, and we should see Lombok here in as part of external library. Cool. Now let's come to our producer and let's delete everything except the attributes. So now I want this producer to be immutable. It means that all the fields should be private and final. The class should be final, no setters. How can we achieve that? Basically, you just have to add at value. But before you change something here uh, with Lombok, just go to settings build and execution so for each id is a little bit different this is for intellij come to compiler annotation processor and just select here enable annotation processing and why is that because now i'm going to add at value so the project uh, will give this warning to you saying hey i first need to remove the private modifier because it's already private but how is it private let's go back to uh the connection factory because this is going to give some error so let's remove this for now and now uh let's just compile the code control shift uh no sorry control f9 not shift and let's go to uh the target classes academy java core basically search for that producer and come here to domain producer as you can see, our original producer basically only has uh, these two attributes, but if you look at the compiled code, we have the public producer, basically the constructor, we have getters, we have equals, uh, we have hash code, we have two string, but we don't have any setters. And the, all the attributes, including the class, are final, even though you didn't write anything. So this is one of the, the magic that Lombok is going to apply to you so private final and then i will add here so you get used to it but uh, after that i'm going to start removing them and we would like a builder right so add builder and if we go back to our producer i think we'll have to compile again control f9 Or maybe we have to reload from let's just reload from disk producer and then now we have the builders let's test uh come here to connection factory so how does this uh, look like now it's a bit different but uh, in the end it's achieving the same results you just have to call like this and if you execute, make sure your Docker is running. Control Shift F10. And as you can see, one row was uh, inserted. 
take a look at how clean your code is. If you remove all the things that IntelliJ is telling you to remove, it will look even cleaner, your entire class. So you can focus on what matters, the problem itself. Now, I promise I will leave for now. And uh, the second thing is uh, logging. Right now, we have been using, uh, if we go back to the connection factory, no, where is it? The repository. We have been using the system out for everything, but this is terrible performance wise. And uh, well, it's going to block your application. So if you have this in production, it's a very, very bad thing uh, because there are libraries that were created especially for this logging library. So we have a logging library called log4j, log4j2. Uh, we have access uh, left4j. Uh, we have logback. Uh, well, there are tons of libraries out there that will provide you uh, logging capabilities that will not affect your performance or at least uh, will have minimal impact. So never, ever, ever use this uh, system out print uh, in your code. From now on, you are going to use logging. So basically, uh, log uh, Lombok makes easier for us to use logging. We just have to add the dependency and one annotation to the class where you would like to use log. So let's first add the dependency. I want to use this log uh, for J2 from Lombok. This is the latest version. We have log for J and log for J2. Just go with log for J2. Now go back to here and search for log for J2. Now mm, search for log for J instead of log for J2. This one, Apache logging. Just copy the log for J core dependency to 14.1. Go back to your project. Now go back to your palm. And right here, add one extra dependency, Ctrl Shift O to import everything or just refresh from Maven. And you will see two new dependencies, log4j API and log4j core. Cool. Now that we have this dependency, we can come here. And before I start uh, changing the producer uh, repository, I'm going to add here to the connection factory test. So log4j when you do this, uh, if you take a look at the compile code, first have to compile, right? And then you go all the way here, come here, then you have your test. You can see that we have this log manager get logger. So the logs, they usually are per class because you are going to see how it looks in the console. But for the logs, uh, usually they have, they need a configuration file, uh, usually XML. Uh, honestly, I don't remember how to write one from memory, so I would just copy one from the internet. Uh, just search log for J, for J2 file example. As you can see, I copied one from these guys. Uh, uh, Mkyong uh, is a nice one. So basically, you need this configuration to tell how the log should behave. Uh, if you look here, we have one that will work for the console and this one that would work if you were logging to a file, uh, but we don't want to log to a file, just want to log to console. So I will copy this and the name of the file needs to be exactly like this log4j2.xml. So go back to our project. And by the way, just go to video 258 branch if you don't want to search for that log4j yourself. Add file log4j2.xml and put it here. So there are a couple of things I'm going to change. First, the status I would like info. The logs they have status. Uh, the statuses are like info, warning, error, trace. I'm going to show you later. And each one of these should be used carefully. So I would advise you to Google a little bit about the logging states when you should log info, when you should log debug when you should log a trace and so on. But the configuration I'm telling here, 
if the project uses this configuration it will be only for info basically warning error and info will be the ones used debug will not be uh, displayed in the console so basically i'm telling here the the target uh this thing out uh, i think uh, we could use console here i'm not sure i'll check that later and then here i'm going to change the package academy dot dev dojo and the level it's uh, info okay so now that i have this configuration it's basically telling hey now every time you put the the log just print the timestamp and then the thread name and then the log level the message and let's see how that looks going back to connection factory test so i'm just comment this out for now and then i have log.info and then duplicate we have debug and we have trace we have warning and we have uh, error so each one of these uh, should be used in their own context so for example debug when you are you want more details or trace when you want more details even than debug warning when something happened uh, but well it didn't affect it but basically you just need to know that happened and error uh, is error so executing now control shift f10 you can see that we have way more information first we have the timestamp when that happened we have the thread we have the log level and we have exactly the package including the the class name and the message itself so now if you don't look at the code for example when you are called when your code is deployed to production basically you only or technically should only have access to the console to the logs uh, sometimes not even the console sometimes you have like a, another system uh, like log stash where you just see the the messages uh, so basically this will give you a lot of information so you can see exactly where the, the things are happening you could even add more information like the name of the method or something else here in the message that will have help you even more so this is going to increase a lot of the performance of your application and if you want more details you can change here to debug and by change to debug control shift f10 as you can see we have a lot more information not only the, the information that we have uh, available in our own classes but information available for the application itself because you are enabling log uh, debug level for everything not only for uh, your own classes i think there was an option here uh, to make it a bit more colorful i'm not sure let me see shift f10 yeah i think um, so you are disabling nc yeah i think i'm pretty sure that there is an option where we can search here uh, enable color log 4j2 windows not 19 basically this one let's see if this works Shift F10. Yeah, maybe it didn't work. Maybe I need to change the console. But there is different way to have a nice color in the console. I think we need to change the console. There are some plugins that will help you with that. Okay, so now that we have the login working, let's go back to the connection, the producer repository and let's make this a proper log basically i want to show here log.info that's the new info message saying hey something successful happened uh producer repository insert it and then i would like to insert here the number of the row so i'll edit this and here i will add one 
argument rows affected so basically this symbol the curly braces will be replaced by this value so usually when i'm adding variables i just put in between single quotes so in the log you know exactly uh, how it looks like and inserted database now if we go back to connection factory test uh, we'll remove these two guys and then we add another one for example control shift f10 uh, we should have we should remove the debug level first remove the debug level here i want this info and then i think we need to remove the salt that we have there Reduce a repository, remove line 19. Let's execute again. Control or Shift F10 only. So as you can see, our producer repository inserted one rows in the database. A lot more meaningful than just the one we had previously. Cool. So I know that this was not about JDBC, but I'm trying to get you ready for the the next courses that are coming so i hope you enjoyed let's continue with more jdbc in the next video bye